2. Chapter 1, I'm sorry. Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. It's a reading for today. Reading through the Bible in a year. Um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Much prayer was always given out. Don't be, don't, hey, don't be falling asleep, man. <laughs> well, you are, oh, well, you're going like, you, your head is <laughs> over like that, you go. <laughs> Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. I've got a hope of heaven. How many of you got a hope of heaven today? Amen. I got to know. I know I'm going to heaven. I'm, I've been saved. I ain't trying. I'm not trying to work my way. I'm not trying to do good stuff. I know I'm going to heaven because of the blood of Christ and the power of His resurrection. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit. See, the, the gospel has to bring forth fruit. The gospel is preached around the world, and but it has to bring forth fruit. What does that mean? It means that it has to convict you and you have to repent and turn from your sins and get saved. That's what it's talking about. Bringing forth fruit. I, I'm glad. I, I, I love to see the gospel bring forth fruit. And uh, the more fruit, the better. The more people saved. If nobody gets saved, what's the use of the whole thing? Shut the thing down and go be a used car salesman or something, preacher, if you don't get any souls saved. <clears throat> Why would anybody be in the ministry if no one's getting saved? You're not a gospel minister. <clears throat> if you're not a gospel minister getting people saved, you might as well go make an honest living somewhere. Quit calling yourself a preacher. A preacher never gets anybody saved. Ain't nothing to him. He ain't a preacher of the gospel. Preacher, the gospel gets souls. Amen? Amen. That's what the Bible says. Bring it forth fruit. I want to bear fruit. Uh, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. Fall on good ground. Since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. It's grace that saves, but we have to tell the truth out. We have to be a we have to take forward the Great Commission. Everybody a preacher. Everybody a soul winner. Everybody that's saved here ought to be telling others about Christ to get him saved. As ye also learned of Ephesus, our dear fellow servant, another soul winner, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared on, unto us your love in the Spirit. Capital S, Holy Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Prayer is an important thing. You ought to be praying. A lot of times I, I, I try to change people and I talk to them and beat my head against the wall trying to change them and that's it's, uh, it's foolish and you're better off praying for folks. If, if someone like I got this, this one, this barber got my hair cut, uh, old mafia guy and he says, you don't want, he says, if you come back again, he says, I don't want to talk about this Bible stuff. And, uh, so I'm praying for him. I'm going to stick my head in over there at his barbershop and, and um, tell him I'm praying for him. I say, I'll come back and get another haircut. But I got to talk to you about the Bible. <laughs> he says he knows all about the mafia. Everybody, how, how many of you, uh, you know, that's kind of an interesting subject. They're, they're, they're kind of... Uh, they're, 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 they're kind of like folk heroes, you know. But they're dirty, rotten, filthy murderers. 
The mafia is is the scum of the earth. I mean, you, you can't imagine they, you know, they, they they make them solid. And by the way, they do, and and they're in New York and where in the big cities where they have them. Uh, they have big street parties and they have state. They feed the people and they're nice to the people and everybody thinks the the, the mafia they're wonderful. But then around the corner down the street, they're cutting someone's throat or chopping them up with a chainsaw. Uh, that's a nasty bunch. Don't 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 let you forget that. And, uh, and but anyway, um, they're they're kind of. I had to, I was going to ask. This, I don't know if he's full of hot air. I don't know not the bottom. I got one haircut from him. He said he's mafia. He, he lost everything. Took out his money and he had a barber's license before he was in the mafia. I thought the mafia killed the people they put out. I didn't know they let them go run around broke. I thought they took care of them and snuffed him out. I don't know. I, I don't know that much about him, but uh, he said he was mafioso, and and he uh, prevailed. His son got killed, and on and on, but whatever. I'm praying for the mafia. Ed's his name. Ed the Barber. Mafia. He's, he's mafia. Desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy. Here's what God wants for you. Now, are you doing it, church? How many of you are saved here? You say, I'm a saved person. You're a saved person. Okay, if you're saved, it says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Who do you please? I was talking to someone this morning, and the only thing they were interested in doing is self-seeking, pleasing their self. We're a bunch of selfish rascals. How many of you are quite selfish? Everybody is. It's me first. We just, you know... We we want the we want the biggest piece of chicken, you know. We want to, we want the best seat. We want, the, you know. We just, we're that's our human nature. Um, it says, "Walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, pleasing God, not pleasing me." Did you know if I please God, and did you know if you please God, uh? We're going to have to go out on the limb and we're going to lose some of our pleasures of life. And and it's just, uh, if you're going to please God, you know what you're going to get? This is why you don't want to be much of a Christian. Because if you please God, you'll suffer persecution. If you please God, you'll suffer persecution. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Verse 11. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. You see, the power of the Holy Ghost is the only thing that can, can win souls. Uh, the only thing that can do God's work is God's Holy Ghost. God only can do his work. And the way he, the way he does his work, he works through you and I as Christians through the power of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Don't forget that. So, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. I'm uh, I'm older now. When I was younger, my, my wife, I, had, I used to have a lot of weights and stuff. And she said, you got to get rid of these weights. You don't, you don't use them anymore. And, uh, and so when she, and I hadn't really used them much anymore. I said, well, you know, you don't see me all the time. I'm using them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I grabbed a couple of them weights. And, and I started curling them and that, and I I grabbed the 20s. I started to curl them. I just want to put them down. Maybe I grabbed the 10s. <laughs> <Start curling. laughs> Used to be able to lift a lot more than that, but, you know, you don't do it in a while, and you get older, it ain't, it ain't you know, the old gray Mary ain't what it used to be, you know. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. I'll tell you something I got that maybe you don't have. The power of God. You know, God will bless an old man. My, my friend Willie Lamb went to heaven. They buried him yesterday. He used to be here ministering with us. He died in Macon, Georgia, back in his home. He went home and died at 94. They buried him yesterday. I sent a... Uh, they said they want me to say something that a preacher that was conducting the funeral would would read it, which I did. And 
got to call in people today and see how the funeral went and everything. But Brother Lamb, he was he was weak in the body, and he was the last. He's gone four years. He went he went back to Macon four years ago. He was with us. He's probably with us four or five years. He's with us quite a while. He won a lot of souls. Used to do a lot of counseling right over there at that counseling table. Did a lot of preaching from this pulpit. Willie Lamb. How many of you remember Brother Lamb? Several of yeah, you were here, some. Yeah, yeah. He talked to everybody. Wonderful. I miss Brother Lamb. He was a dear friend. Even since he went back to Macon. I talked with him regularly, and uh, uh, he's a he's a great man of God. But what what did Brother Lamb have? His body was weak, but he could uh, he had the power of God, you know, and he could preach with power, and he could witness, and and and, and he could win souls, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power, the power of the Holy Ghost, unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness. Now, I got the joy. I mean, you, you say whatever you want. Uh, you can't steal my joy. You can't take my joy from you. Now, I hope you do right. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, it... I, I'd rather see you do right than do wrong. But if you don't do right, you know what? You ain't stealing my joy. My nearest relatives, no matter who they may be, my blood relatives... If they don't do right, and I've got blood relatives that don't do right, but you know what? They ain't stealing my joy. You want to go around moping because your relatives ain't doing wrong, you're a fool. I'm, I'm going to have the joy of the Lord. I'm going to minister to people. I've got blood relatives I can't minister to. But you know what? I can minister to someone else. You think I'm going to sit around and and woe is me, my brother won't get saved, or my sister, no, I'm just going to go on. I wish I could. I, 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 sent them, I sent the three of them, the two brothers and a sister, I sent them that song. Um, Johnny Cash singing it. Uh, do you remember what, uh, 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 the, the, every, time he, every time he closed his show at the hellhole Las Vegas, he sang that song. <laughs> Do you, do you know what song it was when he closed his show in Las Vegas? Uh, Will the circle be unbroken? That's what he's saying. Will the circle be unbroken by and by? By and by. I, I sent that to him because it says, uh, it, it's, it's a song about uh, his, uh, about mother, the undertaker. In the hearst, you, you know, you know what? You ever listen to words of that song? Yeah, it's it's about Mama dying. And uh, Mama wants us all in heaven. My mother did; she was saved. And I, I, I sent them that song every so often. Will the circle be unbroken? They were all there at Mother's funeral, and I was saved, and they weren't. They still ain't saved. So the circle gonna be unbroken. I'll try to send them this thing too. Maybe that'll get them. They won't talk to me. Won't have nothing to do with me. I bring up mother because they love mother. Will the circle be unbroken? Are you going to heaven? I love this. Verse 12. Look here. Verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, capital F, God the Father, Heavenly Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. I got an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, fadeth not away. They're going to read Willie Lamb's will. Some people are going to be happy. Some people ain't. Yeah. Brother Lamb was a smart man. He, uh, he wasn't going to give his money to the devil's crowd. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of Christians. Can you, hear, can you hear me preaching over there, girls? No. <laughs> Huh. 
was not saying Brother Land inherits. I, uh, you know, a lot of Christians, hard working Christians that were godly people, they die and they, they leave an inheritance to heathen children. I wouldn't leave a nickel to a heathen relative. He said, they're entitled to it. They ain't entitled to nothing. <coughs> if I'm a godly man and I got and I, and, 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 and I die, if I got anything left when I go, it's going to be to godly relatives or to the Lord's work, one or the two. So many people that, that have, have uh, they, 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 they feel they have to leave their inheritance to their children, divide it up in this and that. Not if they're heathens, you don't. You say, well, I don't. I think that, I think that's wrong. You mean you mean you'd pass up your uh, your children if they weren't saved in a millisecond? Guarantee you. Because I wouldn't want to leave uh, money uh, that could be used for godly people or God's cause to heathens. If your relatives are heathens, don't leave them a nickel. But we got an inheritance given us thanks, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of saints in life. I got an inheritance. You know what my inheritance is? It's indestructible that fadeth not away reserved in heaven. I will get my inheritance and it's going to be according to how I work for God here and what I do for him in regards to getting souls saved and serving him. That's what, that's what my inheritance is going to be. And it's incorruptible. It won't fade away. Amen? Amen. Verse 13, who hath delivered us, listen, are you being delivered? You're living in wickedness and drunkenness and dope and sex and lying and crookedness and people out there today laying around on the pre uh, property and, and, uh, and all kinds of foolishness and, and wickedness and, and, and drunken stupors and things. And, and by the way, uh, well, some of you love it because you're the same stripe. You lay around drunk with them and wicked with them. If you're supposed to be any kind of Christian, you've got a kind of decency in you at all. Get away from those kind of people. Well, I love him, idiot. You're an idiot if you love him. Get rid of him. Unless you just want to hang out with him do the same wickedness he does. Light and darkness don't mix, you understand. God and Belial, the devil, they don't mix together. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. I've been delivered from alcohol. I've been delivered from the wicked crowd. I'm a new person. I'm a new creation in Christ. Maybe you ain't never been saved if you still live like the devil and run with the devil's people. The reason, you're so, the reason you do it and you stick with it so much is because the daddy's your devil. The devil's your daddy. Ah, we have delivered us from the power of darkness to power of Satan and hath transformed us into the kingdom of his dear son. Uh, do you live as, a, as, a, as a, a child of God, living clean and pure and, and holy? Check it out. You better check out. The Bible says this. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. The only one knows if you're in the faith for real or really say, but you, you and God know. You better get it worked out. Spend eternity in hell. But hath delivered, this, oh, this is a good, a good verse. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, devil, and hath transformed us into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus in whom we have redemption through his blood. Did you know this? Through his blood here, it's taken out of most of the new Bibles. Most of the new versions of the Bible, the, the, uh, the King James Bible is the word of God in the English language. You use something else, watch out, because uh, if, if, if you go to this verse 14, Colossians 1, 14, most of these new Bibles don't have the blood in there. See, they take the blood out of it. They take, the, they take a lot of good stuff out of it that, that God has put in it. You have no right to do that. The devil's Bible. 
You got a Bible don't have the blood in Colossians 1.14. It's the devil's Bible. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. See, you're not going to have forgiveness of sins. Uh, you're not going to have forgiveness of sins unless you're washed in the blood. Uh, something caught my eye yesterday. I was uh, I looking at... Uh, I, I don't pay much attention to Facebook. I generally just put Bible verse up there and preach on there. But I was going down it and... and uh, and this caught my eye. It said, Brad Pitt. Does anybody know who Brad Pitt is? Oh, okay. Yeah. Brad, Brad, all, all the girls say, Oh, Brad Pitt. Oh, what a man. Ain't nothing but a phony drunk. He's one of them phony people from Hollywood. They're not what you think they are. They're a bunch of whores and whoremongers and dope heads and drunkards and wicked people. Hollywood's just full of the devil. But anyway, it says, Brad Pitt becomes a Christian. Now, that caught my attention. And so I, I hit on it and I, I read about it. And it said he, he went through a, a... What's her name? The Jolly Green Giant or something? What was her name? Uh, Who's his wife? Jolene. Jolie. Oh, Jolly. Huh? Jolene, whatever. <laughs> they got a they got a divorce. And he uh he was so crushed he couldn't sleep in his mansion. He slept on a at a friend's house for a week, sleeping on the floor. <laughs> and then he went into alcoholism. And then he found God. And uh, here's all it said about him finding God. This is all it said. I mean, I was looking for, oh, he got born again. And then he says, it says, then I found out that we're all connected. That don't sound like no Christian testimony to me. <laughs> and someone even, now I had to answer this. Someone, they were making comments on it. He says, well, we all are connected if we're in Christ and we're Christians and born again. Yeah. But that ain't, that ain't what he said. He just said we're all connected. Now, by the way, we all do have a connection. You know what the connection is? An unholy, wicked connection because we're all sinners. That's the connection we have. But you've got to repent and turn from your sins. Didn't say nothing about that. So I just I very seldom ever write anything. I wrote it in there. And, and I says the only connection we can have is if we're blood-washed, born-again Christians. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. And we must repent in order to do that. He didn't say nothing about repenting and turning from that wickedness of, of Hollywood, but uh, I, I looked at that. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. You're not saved because all of a sudden you figure we're all connected. We're all connected through sin. We're all sinners. That's what we're connected <laughs> Verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. This is talking about Jesus' preeminence now. For by him were all things created. Jesus was the third person, the second person of the Trinity that's a great creator, you understand. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things uh, were made by him. Without him was nothing made that was made. That's John chapter 1, right in the beginning of that. And so it's Jesus that was the great creator here. It's telling about it. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Talking about Jesus Christ. And he is the head of the body, the church, body of Christ, the church, were connected as the, bottom, uh, the body of Christ through his precious blood and his redemption and, and our repenting, and then we become part of the body. Then we're connected, yeah, but not everybody's connected. Most people are connected to the devil. Only you and I that are saved have come out of that connection and connected with the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the way it is. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and in all things that he might have the preeminence. Does Jesus Christ have the preeminence in your life, or do you? 
Most people are self-seeking and, and they're first. I'm number one. You see it all the time on the football field and everywhere this, that, race car, whatever, wherever it is, everybody got, I'm number one. And you ain't a Christian then. Christians are way back at the back of the line, you know. Christians are humble. Jesus is number one. Amen? Forget about this. Crip, you got to you be a number one. For it pleased the Father, Heavenly Father, that in him should all fullness dwell. Who? Jesus Christ. And having made peace... Through the blood of his cross, I like, there's the blood again. These new Bibles have snatched that out of there. <laughs> and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, I say, whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, that's, that's, the, that's the life you live now in wickedness and drunkenness and all kinds of perversion and lying and stealing and everything. You live as a child of the devil and that's the way you are. Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, shedding his blood to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. I'm holy, I'm unblameable because of Jesus, amen. He's the one. His blood his resurrection, the gospel. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, keep studying that Bible, and being not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Christ died for your sins according to scriptures. He was buried. He rose again from the grave the third day according to scriptures. That's the gospel. I've got the hope of the gospel. I asked someone at therapy yesterday. I seen that my therapist is a Christian, ladies and Christian, and she witnesses people there. She wins souls there too. And I, I seen in, in one of the rooms there, one of the lead therapists, they had a, they had a, he is risen thing there. It looked like a little child had colored on it. And, and that had some other things about the Lord Jesus. And, and, uh, and I asked my uh, therapist, I said, uh, uh, Maureen, who's, whose office is that? And he says, oh, that's Lindsay's. Uh, and and I, I called Lindsay over. It's time to go. Yeah. I just got one more story to tell, honey. <laughs> He's got a story to tell. And, and I said, oh, I was just leaving. I was done with my therapy. And I said, oh, Lindsay, looks like you got faith. I've seen that. And she says, yeah. Yeah. I said, uh, faith, hope, and love. You got, she said, I got faith. I says, um, faith, hope, and love. What's the greatest? And she said, very quickly, love. She knew. I says, oh, you know. Uh, love's even bigger, bigger than uh, faith. We talk about faith. Faith's important, but love is more important. Love supersedes everything. And anyway, um, amen. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. I'll think about the gospel every day. I preach the gospel every day. You get mad. You get mad because I keep talking about it. You got to get saved. The blood of Christ. You got to repent. You say, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I want because you're lost and you're going to hell. And if you were saved, you'd love to hear it. I love to tell the story. And those that are saved love to hear it. I could be riding anywhere across the country. I could turn on the radio and try to find some gospel preacher. And, and I hear that good old gospel preached about the blood of Christ and the power of, of God and everything. And I just get so excited. I never get tired of it. I never get tired of running into questions and talking about Jesus. Because he is, has the what? It says here in this, the preeminence. First, get yourself out of the saddle and get Jesus up in the saddle. Amen? Let's get him first. Amen. Grounded. Be not moved away from the hope which ye have heard and which was preached. To every creature which is under heaven. Preach to every creature. Did you know? Did you know there's not going to be one person that has an excuse? Anybody that wants the gospel, if it's if it's a heathen in the in the darkest jungle, they seem to be unlearned and don't even have a written language. Anybody that wants the gospel, God will get it to them. 
because there's got to be none with an excuse. You got no excuse because you hear you're hearing it preached today, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everyone that goes to hell, listen now, and I'm done. Everyone that goes to hell is going to go to hell because they've re refused the gospel. They said no to Jesus. They want to live in their sin and stay in their sin. Is that you? I don't know. Is that you out there on Facebook? I don't know. In order to be saved, you must receive the gospel. Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No other way to be saved. Confucius won't save you. Muhammad won't save you. Buddha won't save you. Good works won't save you. Water baptism won't save you. Nothing will save you. Only the blood of Christ and the power of His. Do you believe that today? I believe it. Have you received it? In order to receive it, you have to repent and turn to it. And have a real experience. Born again experience. Lord, thank you for the gospel. Jesus needs a preeminence here in Colossians 1. What a great chapter. You say Jesus has a preeminence. I'm saved. I'm born again. He's changed my life. Old things are... He brought me out of darkness. And he brought me into his glorious light. Hallelujah. Glorious light of the gospel and following Christ. Follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I will follow him. Follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow him. Would you follow him? I have. I've been now for 50 years, eight months. Follow him now. Repent. Turn from your sins. Pray this sinner's prayer with me. Get it behind you. Come from darkness to light. This is the prayer. Pray it now. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. No one's looking around, just a pastor. You say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer today in a minute in my heart. Just slip your hand up. I prayed that prayer today in a minute in my heart. I prayed that prayer today in a minute in my heart. Thank you for these hands. Glory to God. I pray many of you out there on Facebook have done it. Thank you, Lord, for decisions today. Thank you for the food. Bless our fellowship around the table, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our next service will be Sunday.